It's good to be in church this morning, isn't it? Amen. Now, um, a lot of times, folks, we, uh, you know, we take church for granted. We come to church, and it's just another one of those things that is on the calendar for Sunday morning to do. Uh, sometimes you come to church, and you're expecting something. Sometimes you come to church, and you have uh, kind of predetermined in your mind uh, what it is that, that you're looking for, and, and that may not be a completely bad thing, but there's a lot of different uh, reasons why, why folks come to church, and it's always my prayer that, that the Lord would be able to take something that is said throughout the course of the message, throughout maybe even one of the songs, maybe one of the testimonies, maybe something that someone says to you when we're greeting one another, when the pastor remembers to do that between the second and third verses of the third song. Uh, but maybe something that is simple as someone says something to you that can be an encouragement and a help to you along the way. Amen? Uh, open your Bibles, if you will, this morning to uh, Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And I'm going to read a, a familiar passage of Scripture to you. Acts chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they that knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and, and, and they were filled with a wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them uh, in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you once again uh, here on a Sunday morning. We're grateful to, to be here. We're grateful, Father, that we have a Savior that uh, looks over our and takes care of us. Uh, Father, you know our needs, you know our desires, you know our struggles, and it is just good to be able to come before you and once again ask you to open up the words of life and somehow or another to take those words that are um, in, in physical form, just mere ink on a blank piece of, piece of paper, but Father, with a, spiritual, um, with a spiritual power that you put behind them, Lord, you can take them and touch our hearts, and you can do something with them that uh, no other book can do. And we just pray that you would help each and every one of us here this morning. We need you. We love you. And Father, you are holy, as we sang just a few minutes ago. I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have this familiar passage of Scripture here in uh, Acts chapter 3. And I was reading through it and, again, just kind of uh, settled in on it for uh, the sermon here this morning. And so I, I kind of struggled with, with what to, to title the message. So I actually kind of gave it uh, two titles along the way. One... When God answers prayer, that's pretty good. Obviously, that goes uh, along with the, you know, with the passage. But the other title I came up with is uh, What a Sinner Needs. Just simply, What, uh, what a Sinner Needs. And when I, when I got to thinking about that along, along the lines of what's happening here in this passage of Scripture, I got to thinking, you know, there are certain things that, that we need of God on a regular basis. Amen. I mean, there's lost sinners, amen, if you've never been saved here this morning, if, if you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ by faith uh, for salvation, for forgiveness of sins, you're what we call a lost sinner. That is, you're lost, you don't have direction, you're actually headed on the road to hell and don't even realize it a lot of times. And then there are folks that have found Jesus Christ and what he did for them on Calvary. They, they put their heart and their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and they trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And at that point in time, the Lord put them on a new path and they are now saved on their way to heaven, uh, saved, sealed, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and the, Lord, the Lord protects them and, and seals them. And they couldn't make it to hell even if they tried. But you know, the truth of the matter is they're still down here on this earth, still walking in this flesh. And we just call them saved sinners. 
as opposed to lost sinners. Amen? Amen? Um, so in, in some respect, folks, we're, we're all sinners. And if you're lost here this morning, you need salvation. That's the biggest thing that you need. Uh, but if you're saved here this morning, you're still a sinner. And what this man found here certainly can apply to you as well. And I noticed a couple of things about what this gentleman faced in the process of uh, this, this passage. I noticed this. I noticed this guy was sitting out there at the temple waiting for what he expected. Amen? And when you get to thinking about this gentleman's daily life, when you get to thinking about what he must have went through on a day-to-day -day basis, listen, brethren, I'm sure it was not all, you know, roses. Right? I'm sure this man every morning got up and had to face some challenges that were very difficult for him to face. I bet he had to face some regrets. I bet he had to face some, you know, some, uh, sometimes even some difficulties with his own heart, keeping his heart right. But this man couldn't have had a life that was what you and I would think of as easy. And I got to thinking about this along the way and uh, along that title of When God Answers Prayer and What a Sinner Needs. And I came up with something that seems kind of odd and, and unfair pleasant to think about, but you know what? This sinner needs to be faced with problems. Now, that's not really a nice thing to think about. It's not a lot of fun to think about the fact that, that me as an individual, even though I'm saved, need at some level to be faced with some problems that I've got to face and struggle through and get through. And I have a tendency, I'm sure like this gentleman down there at that temple, I have a tendency to look at some of the problems that I have that I have to face day after day, sometimes, brethren, honestly, really even year after year, because some things just don't go away that easy. And there's a lot of times where I ask the question that this, this lame man must have asked God, why didn't you take care of me yesterday? Think about that. This, this guy's been going down to the temple Day after day after day, he's got the routine. He's got the routine down, right? He's got people that carried him in, the whole passage. We, we read all that. But let me ask you this. Why didn't God choose to heal him yesterday? That's kind of rough when you think about it. Why didn't God choose? If God's going to fix my problems, if God's going to, going to deal with me on what I need to be dealt with, if he's going to take care of what I'm struggling with, how come God didn't do it yesterday? That's hard to think about. I don't like that one. This one is not pleasant. I look up at the Lord and I say, Lord, you mean to tell me I'm going to have to struggle with this for how many more days? But I thought about that, and I thought, why, why didn't God just heal him yesterday? You know, it's because, brethren, you and I, as a sinner, saved or lost, you and I need to face some of these problems. Amen. You and I, as, as unpleasant as they are, you and I, and as hard as it is to accept, you and I need to face some of these problems because, brethren, listen, if he was not facing the problem of being lame, I doubt that he would have been down at the temple at the time of prayer. That's just human nature. I mean, granted, Peter and John were there, and they weren't lame and all that, and it's, that's a great thing to aspire to. And I hope that even when you're not having problems, you enjoy being around God's people and in the place of prayer. Amen? Amen? But the truth of the matter is, some of the problems that we have to face and struggle with and go through are because the Lord desires to get us to a place of prayer. The Lord desires to get us to that place where, we, where he wants us, where he can give to us what we need. And without the problem, chances are we wouldn't be there. What does a sinner need? A sinner needs to be faced with problems. And that whole time the sinner is faced with that problem, this lame man is faced with the problem of his ankles not working, he's sitting there going, Lord, why haven't you taken care of me? Why haven't, you, why haven't you done what I needed? Why haven't you given me what I needed? And I'm sure that he thought that through many, I don't know how long he was lame, but I'm sure he thought that for quite a while. 
I'd like to, to point out something else. This is not the first day Peter and John went to the temple either. Think about that. That means yesterday the lame man was there. Yesterday the lame man had the problems. Yesterday the lame man needed to be healed. Yesterday the lame man was sitting there begging just like he is today. Yesterday Peter and John went to the temple to pray. Now I, the scripture doesn't say that, but I'm, I'm guessing this is probably a regular occurrence for Peter and, and, and John. I don't think that's a far stretch. But he didn't get healed yesterday. That's kind of wild. It's not the first time Peter and John went to the temple. Say, Lord, why didn't you heal me yesterday? I don't know. I don't know why this lame man didn't get healed yesterday. If I was God, I could understand. But I'm not even close, so I'm not even going to try. Amen? I don't know that anyone has an answer for that. I just know when I'm reading through the passage and when I'm looking at this scripture, I see this man who for quite some time, I'm assuming, uh, I know it's, that's the case in several other instances where this type of thing happened, this man who for quite some time has been facing this problem, he's now down at the temple. He wouldn't be there without the problem. And the Lord waited until today to give him an answer. See, what does a sinner need? A sinner needs to be faced with, with some problems. Right? That man had to sit there and go through the humiliation of holding his hand out and begging just for food for the day. Think about that for a minute. The Lord allowed him to go through the humiliation of begging God's people for help and didn't heal him yesterday. I don't understand why. That's not a pleasant thing to think about. But when I start thinking about some of the problems that I'm faced with, I have to understand them in God's context. Amen? I have to understand, do I really believe, right, that all things work together for good or, or not? Do I really believe that God will take care of me or not? Listen. This man was faced problems, and he probably asked himself, why not yesterday? Lord, why haven't you taken care of this already? But there was another thing on his mind, and that is just simply this. He was at the place where he had been humbled. He's begging. He's about as low down as you can possibly get. And he's just thinking about what do I need for today to survive? I don't even think that he's really even worried all that much about his ankles. I think this gentleman is down at this temple day after day after day, and the Lord has humbled him, and he's just holding out this plate, begging God's people to give him something that will sustain him for today. And that's kind of where his life had gotten to. All right? He was faced with problems he didn't understand why he wasn't healed yesterday. He was just worried about what he needed today. But I want you to know something. Even though that sounds a very terrible plight for this man to have to go through, isn't it true that God has sustained him this far? I'll grant you it wasn't pleasant for him. I'll grant you it wasn't the most ideal condition that, you know, that a person can live in. I'll grant you that he probably had aspirations and dreams and desires of something much grander for his life. 
But the Lord had something planned. The Lord knew what he was going to do, and the Lord knew when he was going to do it. Amen. Amen? Amen? And so day after day, this man had to be humbled, go down to the temple, hold out, the, hold out his hat or whatever he held out, a cup, whatever he held out, and beg from, from God's people just to survive. And day after day, folks, isn't this true? The Lord put enough money in that cup for him to survive. It may not have been luxurious, his life. He may not have had a lot of worldly goods. Probably didn't. But it is true the Lord provided for him each day what he needed until it was time for something big to happen. Amen? That's the unpleasant part that, that we really, really, really don't need. I, um, I noticed something else as I was going through this passage of Scripture. I notice not only do you need to be faced with problems, but folks, you need other people around you. You need to be facilitated by other people. Listen, none of us get through this life by ourselves, and that's a recurring theme we say over and over and over. It's because we got to drill it into our head so many times because we're all so independent. We're all very self-reliant. We're all very headstrong, right? This, this man here, listen, folks, this man here needed somebody to come along and on a day-to-day -day basis, put something in his cup. Amen. Humiliating, yes. Not the life he wanted, but God provided for him. And, and, and we, we like to be self-reliant. We don't like to think of ourselves as needing anybody else. I'll do it myself. Brother Matt Anderson was, <laughs> we were talking yesterday, helped him do some work out at his house the other day, and uh, they're coming along real good, actually to pray for him, and <clears throat> but he was putting in uh, some footers for some patio work that he was doing, and about, I think he said about 2,000 pounds of concrete, and he got the idea, I'm going to do this all myself. He tweaked his back. <laughs> and then Brother Roy, he wound up with shingles. <laughs> well, we're like that, right? It reminds me, you know what it reminded me of, Brother Roy? I love you, sir. It reminded me of when you tried to get the refrigerator down the stairs by yourself. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, we're, we're like that. We're just like that. Yeah. My, uh, my wife found a piano on, on Craigslist the other day, and I asked Jeremy, hey, what are you doing? Right? We can go pick this thing up. Right? So we went and grabbed this piano. We picked it up. We hauled it out of the garage, put it in the back of the truck, got it down the stairs. The next day, I'm going, oh, I hope Jeremy's okay. <laughs> He's younger than I am, but man, I hope he's... <laughs> but isn't it true we just love to be self-reliant? We think we can do it ourselves. This man had to face the fact that other people had to be involved in his life. Brethren, they had to carry him. Not only is it humiliating enough just to have to beg, he can't even walk to the temple on his own. They had to carry him to the temple and put him down there so that he could hold out his hand and beg. That's, that's pretty tough. See, you need to be faced with problems because those problems will drive you to a place where God wants you. Amen. And he knows where that place is and he knows when the solution's ready to come. And he knows exactly what time and who to put in place, all that stuff. But you, need, you also need to be facilitated by other people. I noticed this. I noticed when he was sitting out there in, uh, in front of that temple, he's sitting out there asking for alms, right? Alms, alms for the poor, right? Um, and Peter and John showed up. And this man, in his state, has got to look to Peter and John and say this, in essence, whatever term he used, will you help me? 
will you help me? That's a rough place to get to. But without the problems, he would never have done that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Without the circumstances, he would never have done that. And this guy is in a place in front of this temple where he's got to call out to Peter and John and ask them to help him. You will need help from other people. Amen? Amen. Listen, when you talk about sinners, right? Sinners are born helpless. I mean, this man is a perfect picture of somebody that gets saved and, and salvation. You can picture that, obviously. He's helpless. He can't do anything for himself. He's got to ask help from somebody else. That's what we need to do when we're looking for salvation from Jesus Christ. I can't do this on my own. Lord, save me. I can't forgive my own sins. Right? He's a perfect picture. He's a sinner outside of God's house. He's a picture of a man outside of God's house sitting there begging, waiting for something to happen. He's a picture of how sinners spiritually have to beg. You know, when you, go, when you get saved, you actually go to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in a fashion, you're begging. Lord, I can't do this on my own. I have no hope. Would you please save me? Amen. And just as it's hard for men not to be self-reliant, it's hard for us to get to that place spiritually with the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Amen. But we have to get there. We have to get there. This man was sitting in front of the temple expecting Christians to give something to him. That's a beautiful picture. You know, if you're here today and you're going through struggles, you're going through problems, maybe you're lost, maybe you're saved. You know what you should be expecting? For Christians to give you something. Amen? Amen? That's what this man was doing. He was down there at the temple just expecting Christians to give him something. Listen, he was, he was sitting down there, and the Lord, in type, reached down to the self-reliant man, and these other people stepped in, carried him down to the temple, and then Peter and John walk up, and he's asking for alms from them, and you know what they have the gall to do? corner him <laughs> and start talking to him individually. This guy is, is not only has the face, the humiliation of people walking by on a daily basis, just throwing money into his cup, but now all of a sudden Peter and John, he, all he's asking for is some money. And next thing you know, they've got his attention and he's being cornered. He needs other people, even though sometimes it may not necessarily be pleasant. See, we need the problems, but we need, we need other people. Now, I got to say this along the way. We talked about the fact that he's been here many days before. Peter and John have been to the temple many days before. We talked about that, which, which means this. I don't think Peter and John knew they were going to be used that day. Think about that. You have this lame man sitting at the temple. How many times have they passed him? I don't know. But today, the Lord lays on their heart to say something to him and to heal him. Now think about that in the context of of you not necessarily being aware of when the Lord's going to use you to help heal somebody else. Amen? Again, I don't think that, I don't read any reason at all why Peter and John should think of today any different than yesterday. They're going down to the temple three o'clock in the afternoon for prayer meeting. That was their whole intent. 
And the Lord stops them in their tracks and says, I've got something for you to do. I don't think they thought, well, why, why didn't you have us do it yesterday, Lord? I think they were just probably glad to be used of God, amen? But that means this, you can come to the same place day after day as a Christian, week after week, be around the same people, and one day the Lord's going to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, I want you to go talk to brother so-and-so. I want you to go talk to sister so-and-so. And there may be something that you give to them that helps, like this lame man got helped. Amen? You see, we need, we need other people. We may not like it. We may choose to try to work around it. But we need other people. Amen. And there's a final thing that I kind of uh, picked out of this passage. And that is not only do we need the problems to put us where we need to be put, not only do we need other people, but listen, we need to get to a point, folks, where all this stuff that's going on, we find it very personal with us. So Peter and John go down to the temple, and this gentleman is out here um, begging, right? How many people were out in front of that temple begging that day? Because when I read through the Bible, I kind of get the impression that there's pretty much consistently a whole bunch of people out there. Right? I mean, in the cases that we read about, there's, you know, the pool of Bethesda, how many, there's all kinds of people down there, so many that the, you know, the lame man can't make it down because somebody always gets in front of him, right? There's, there's multitudes around the Lord Jesus Christ wanting to get healed over and over and over again, right? So when I read through the, when I read through the scriptures, what I see is I see a whole bunch of people in need of something happening. And this lame man was just down at the temple, probably amongst a whole bunch of other people who had various needs, but you know what? That day, that day, it was personal for him. Not yesterday, that day. That day, uh, Peter and John will come walking by, that day, they catch his eye. That day, they corner him. It says there uh, in verse 4, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Now, t just tell me, how uncomfortable is that? I mean, if I were to come up to you, Brother Wally, I'm talking to you right now during the sermon. Because <laughs> you need it before you go back to South Carolina. <laughs> I mean, that's what they did, right? They got all these people around. They're walking up, minding their own business. He's just asking for money. And all of a sudden, fastening his eyes on him, look on us. I wonder what he was thinking. <laughs> what did I do? I didn't trip him. But something about it, folks, that day, something about that day it was personal. Something about that day was not like any other day, even though the same scenario or circumstances had been played out. He was in front of the temple, Peter and John came by, there was a lot of other people there, blah, 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 right? But there was something about today. Today, it became personal. Peter and John, Peter looked at him and said, fasten Fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And you know what it says? It makes a very small statement there in that passage of scripture. It says this. It says, and he gave heed. That guy actually, in spite of everything that was going wrong, in spite of every humiliation that he had to endure, in spite of the fact that he was out there begging just for food for the day, in spite of the fact that it was God's people who were having to throw money in his plate just so that he could have something to eat, in spite of the fact that he probably had virtually nothing at all in life, Peter and John came by 
fastening their eyes upon him, said, look unto us, and he looked. Amen? Amen? It says he gave heed unto them. That, that is amazing. He gave heed unto them. Now, it also says in verse four, uh, 5, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. I notice this about this beggar, this lame man. When this whole spiritual thing starts happening, he's not expecting what he's going to get. <laughs> the Lord's got all these problems. He had them yesterday. He didn't get healed yesterday. All the things we've been through. Now he finally gets uh, Peter and uh, uh, John's attention and they say, hey, look at us. And he's thinking, ah, the Lord's going to give me some money. Praise the Lord. The Lord's going to give me some money so that I can have enough food to eat for today. Right? He gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. And then Peter says those famous lines, silver and gold have I none. Just for an instant, just for an instant, I wonder what he thought. This whole buildup, this whole grand thing, he's already been humbled, and he's, he has to be down at the temple begging from God's people, just to have enough food to eat for the day. Peter and John get a hold of his attention. They lock eyes, and they say, look upon us. He looks at them, and he, he gives heed to them. He pays attention, and he's expecting to receive some money from them. And then they say, sorry, we don't have any money. <laughs> That's rough. Just for a split second, you understand the heartbreak. You understand that, that oh, great. I'm not going to get anything at all from these guys. Silver and gold have I none. He must have, his heart must have sank. Probably a foot in his chest. I thought I was onto something there. I thought the Lord was going to give me something. I thought the Lord was going to finally fulfill one of my needs. These two bozos don't have any money. They don't have what I need. They don't have what I'm asking for. Which rolls us back to kind of one of the first questions I asked you. Why, you know, why did you come to church today? You see, a lot of times you, you come to church because you think in, in your mind, I've got problem A, and I need to have problem A taken care of. Problem A is what I'm dealing with right now. Buddy, I'm hungry, and I need money for food. Problem A needs to be fixed. God, please fix problem A. All right? And so you come to church because your finances are all whacked out. God, help me with some money here. And instead, you get this sermon on selfishness. <sighs> Silver and gold have I none. <laughs> Well, Lord, that's not what I came to church for. That's not what I needed to hear today. My problem is I'm hungry, and I'm begging. I'm already humbled. I'm about as low as I can go. I've got my cup out, and all I need is a little bit of money for some food. And these yahoos come by and say, oh, by the way, I don't got any money. Let me talk to you about being selfish, you sinner. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Right? Maybe you come with marriage problems. And maybe your marriage is crumbling and you come to church because you think, God, I need help with my marriage problems. Here's the problem that I'm having in my life. I need help with marriage problems. And then you get to, to church and something is said about a character flaw that you have about forgiveness. And you go, it's not what I need. I need to figure out a way how to keep my wife from leaving me. And sometimes you equate the two, and sometimes you don't. <laughs> so 
Sometimes that, that whole sermon meant absolutely nothing for the problems that you are facing today. Sometimes you come to church and your problem is your health. And you're facing some, some health issues that, that look like they could be pretty serious. And the preacher preaches some stupid sermon on patience. <laughs> That's just not nice. Are you beginning to see the problem here? <laughs> All right? I'm looking at this thing going, oh, Lord. This is, why, this is how you answer prayer. Amen. This is what the sinner, saved or lost, really needs. Amen. You see, his life had been consumed with his troubles and his struggles and his plight, and, and he was there, again, doing the right thing. He had humbled himself, everything, and it had to have been a miserable life, and he was just concerned about something to eat for the day. He goes down to the temple, hoping God's people will give him a little bit of money so that he could have something to eat for the day, and then Peter and John show up, and they say, sorry, don't got no money. And at that instant, your thoughts are, great, you can't help my problem. Oh, but brethren... The Lord does things a little differently sometimes than we expect. Amen? The Lord gets a hold of our heart. The Lord fixes our problems in a different direction than we thought he was going to go. That's hard to deal with. It's hard to understand why he didn't heal me yesterday. Same people, same circumstances, same place. Everything was the same. Why couldn't I get healed yesterday? I don't know. I don't. I, I don't get it. But I know this. I know we come to church. We have these expectations like this lame man did because of needs that we have. And sometimes we get there and we hear, sorry, I don't have what you need. Silver and gold have I none. And our, our inclination, if we're not careful, is to shut down and go, great. No help for me again today. So you come to church looking for help for, with finances, and you get a sermon on selfishness. That's not nice. You come to church looking for help with your marriage, with struggles and trials in the marriage, and you get this sermon on forgiveness. That's not what I needed. I need to know how to keep my marriage together. You come to church looking for some help with your health, and you get this sermon on patience. Well, who needs patience when you're going through cancer? But you know what? You've got to take whatever is out there and make it personal. That Ethiopian eunuch is out there in that caravan reading Isaiah the prophet. Philip comes up to him, understandest what thou readest? How can I, can I except some man should guide me? Right? He's, he's sitting there reading the Bible going, I don't even know what's going on. And then they go through the thing and Philip says, you know, um, the, Phil, the Ethiopian eunuch takes what Philip was explaining and says this, Right? See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? The Ethiopian eunuch took what Philip gave him and said, okay, how can I apply that to me? Right? Paul's on the road to Damascus. The Lord strikes him down, strikes him blind. All of a sudden, what Paul was going through became very personal, even though it was not what Paul expected. Amen? This lame man was in front of the temple. He'd been humbled, everything we talked about, and he was expecting one thing, and the Lord said, oh, sorry, don't have that for you right now. And he could have, at that point in time, shut down, 
get away from me then, I don't want to bother with you, I'm going to go over here, maybe they've got some money. Which is what normally happens. But the Lord oftentimes will take and deal with you something, deal with you about something that you may or may not equate with the problem that you're facing. All right? Obviously, when this man figured out he was going to get his ankles healed, that addressed the problem he was facing. But sometimes we're so hardened and so focused in on our problem, we don't see the connection. I mean, when I'm, think, when I'm praying about finances and the Lord gives me a sermon on selfishness, it's easy for me to overlook that connection and realize, oh, the reason why I am where I am is because when I have money, I blow it all on things that I want because I'm selfish. And the Lord's trying to correct the real problem. But I'm not worried about the real problem and selfishness. That's a character problem. I need money today because I have bills. And God didn't help me with any money. You see how it works? So this lame man is sitting down in front of the temple and he's expecting alms of them. And the first thing that Peter and tells him is silver and gold have I none and sometimes the Lord may operate with us that way now I'll grant you sometimes right sometimes the Lord does it differently you know what is it what is it that I shall give you <laughs> that my eyes might be opened okay no problem it's great when that happens it's a lot easier right it, it's much it's much more simple that way but sometimes what the Lord needs to give us to get really fixed is not necessarily what we're asking for and expect to get. Amen? Whatever it is, you have to find it personal. What the Lord gives you when you study his word, when you're in prayer, when you're in church, listen, whatever it is the Lord gives you, whatever it is he deals with you about, even though it may at the time seem completely unrelated to what you're going through, you know what the best advice is? Don't turn away from it. Because had that lame man turned away from Peter and John after the words, silver and gold have I none, we would have been back tomorrow. Right? We would have been back tomorrow. So the idea is, listen, you go to church, you expect one thing. If the Lord does something else with you, you just got to take by faith that it is going to help you and benefit you probably in even a greater way than what you imagined. Amen? Amen. The, Lord is good. the Lord's not interested in leaving you down in front of that temple forever. Right? And I can't tell you whether it's going to be today or tomorrow. But when you come to church, your mind is focused on one thing and you're struggling with one trouble. The best advice I can give you is, listen, when the Lord deals with you about something else that may even seem unrelated, don't let it go. Take the thing that's unrelated and deal with it and worry about the other thing later. And brethren, what you'll find, if you'll do that, is God is getting a bigger problem fixed than what you were originally worried about. Amen? God is getting a bigger problem fixed than what you were originally worried about. Now, this man the next day could walk. Right? This man the next day could walk. But I'd like to say something. God answering that prayer is not always exactly the way you thought it would be answered. Amen. Right? Sometimes the appearance of what God's doing doesn't match the grand scale of what's really happening. <laughs> I'm a beautiful butterfly. Sometimes the appearance of what's going on there is not exactly what's really happening, okay? You have to be, listen, 
the Lord, the Lord healed this guy's ankles. And brethren, he could get up the next morning and walk. Can I say this? He probably still didn't have a lot of money the next day. Think about that. I don't think he got rich overnight. But he could walk. You see, that solves the problem. He could go to work. He could labor. He could now earn money. He, it solves the problem. It solves a bigger problem. Not only did it solve the problem of, of him not being able to bring in income, it solved the problem of him not being able to get around by himself. He didn't have to be carried the next day. Right? The Lord knew what he needed more than he did. And when that happens, brethren, you have bigger problems solved than you ever realized. But the way that he got there was by taking the lesson that on the surface didn't seem to apply to him. <laughs> but it really did. Amen? Silver and gold have I none. I went to church today and I didn't get what I needed. Really? Really? then you better talk to God. Amen. Right? Because <laughs> I'm sure somewhere along there, I mean, even if you got a preacher that's really lousy, somebody else in the congregation can say something to you and help you out. Right? There's somebody there. There's other people around in church that can help you out. There's other people that can give you advice. There, I mean, even if the preacher's like, you know, me. <laughs> there's somebody that can give you that help but we don't want to help from other people because we like to do it ourselves. We don't like, we don't like our problems, but sometimes you need your problems. I learned from this passage, when God answers prayer or what a sinner needs, right, is we're faced with problems. If this guy hadn't been faced with this problem, his prayers probably never would have been answered. Amen. Right? If you weren't faced with some of the problems that you're struggling with and faced with, you probably wouldn't have spent near as much time in prayer. Amen. We're just that way. We're, just, we're, we're lazy at heart. We like being lazy. I mean, we have to come to the place where we realize that rather it's God answering prayers or what we really need is other people. And we like to be loners, and we like to do it by ourselves, and we don't want to have to bother anybody else, or we don't want to have to listen to anybody else tell us what to do. But the truth of the matter is, we need other people. That lame man had to be carried every day. He was humbled to the point where he couldn't even walk to the temple to beg for himself. That's pretty low. That's pretty low. I'd much rather find out that other people can be useful long before that ever happened. Amen? We need other people. Amen. And finally, when it comes right down to it, we have got to take whatever God is giving us and make it personal. It may not be what you thought it was going to be. Okay? Sometimes that happens. But I promise you this. It'll be what you need. Amen. God doesn't do things like that at random. I mean, if you need your ankles healed, he didn't come up to this guy and give him his sight back. <laughs> right? The Lord knows what we need. It's just sometimes we don't recognize how he gives it to us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And I'll, I'll promise you this, folks. If you'll take that same approach, right? But just, just 
you're going to be faced with problems because you need them. They're not fun, I'll grant you, but you need them to get you where you need to be. You get to the place where you realize and can accept other people helping you. And then when the Lord starts dealing with you, you find a way to take it personal. This is for me. God, this is what I needed to hear today. You say, it's not what I came for. That may be the case. Now, sometimes it is what you came for, and that's great when that happens. But sometimes it's not. But when it's not, it doesn't mean it won't fix your problem. Amen? Amen. It doesn't mean it won't fix your problem. God always knows what you need. Amen. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, another Sunday morning here, just a chance to open up your book and once again just be reminded of some stories that, uh, quite frankly, we've heard over and over and over. Uh, we sing songs about them all the time in Sunday school, and, uh, but Father, they have meanings that can help us, sometimes in ways that we don't even imagine. I do ask that you would minister to your people here today, that you would... Uh, Give each and every one of them what they need. And Lord, even give them a little insight as to why. Uh, we're human, we're frail, and we don't understand things, Father, the way that you do. I pray that you'd increase our faith. Uh, Father, you're a good God. And I don't understand the timing on why you do things the way you do sometimes, but I know this, I know you do all things well. I pray that you'd help us now as we go into invitation that you would bless these folks for being here, that you'd bless uh, Father the rest of the day. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.